Now, there's a company out there called Terrible Games, and they made the game we're going to talk about in this episode of Board Games with Scott Crunch. But they also made a game that was a game I enjoyed quite a lot called War on Terror. They're terrible games. They're a UK company, and they like to point at situations where, well, Americans have a pretty heavy involvement. And so in War on Terror, you played one of several countries uh, fighting for control of the world. And as players got knocked out of the game, they joined the side of the terrorists. And so as the game went on, more and more players became terrorists. So at the end, it was down to perhaps a couple good players and everyone else working on the terrorist team. So it ended up being this bizarre cooperative type game. And it taught some interesting lessons. It also came with this, this mask that uh, certain players would wear when they decided to uh, join the side of terror. Um, now in Crunch, it's a game about banking, and so they actually recommend you play the game in three-piece suits, as I'm wearing here. And I thought, you know, that's really appropriate, an appropriate way to represent people in the banking industry who are taking personal profit in this time of government bailouts. Well, it's appropriate to put these two games together and show them as they really are. Hi there, welcome to Board Games with Scott. This is a video show where I take a board game and briefly explain it and review it. My hope is to help you decide if it's a game you want to purchase. Now, on this show, I'm going to talk about a game called Crunch. This is from the company Terrible Games. I received a copy of it to review. And it's a game that I quite enjoy, which doesn't surprise me because I enjoyed their previous games. And what was interesting about these two games they've put out is they're educational games. They actually teach you something through the playing of the game. There are also comedy games, uh, but the comedy, while there are funny cards that are put in there, it's actually a funny situation you're put into. And through the game, the comedy, the irony comes out. And so I, I think it's really clever what they've done. I would actually encourage them to design some educational games because a lot of designers out there of educational games are basically making drills in game form and aren't doing a very good job of it. These games actually teach you something as you play. And I really like that. But anyway, Crunch is a game about bankers, and, and the theme, it's a game for utter bankers, which is a UK, it's a UK company, that's a British pun of utter wankers, utter bankers, you see, comedy, comedy. Anyway, um, what you're trying to do in the game is embezzle money and end up with the largest personal fortune. You're put in charge of a bank, and this is a player elimination game, I'll warn you now. People get knocked out of the game because your bank is on a death spiral. Um, you're all in the bad situation from the beginning. Things are going to get worse and you want to hang on as long as you can. Embezzle what you can during the game. At the end of the game, you're going to look at what everyone embezzled and the player who embezzled the most won. So it's not the last player standing who wins. It's the player who managed to embezzle the most during the course of the game. Now, so a player who embezzles very heavily early on might be able to win even though they have no money left to let their bank operate. Their bank collapses, but they put away enough in their personal stash to win the game. Now, the game has an interesting rule. You'll have to decide if you're going to play with it. Um, they actually recommend you wear a three-piece suit during the game because one of the rules is that if you can manage to hide cards on your body, up your sleeve, wherever during the game, at the end of the game when you're tallying, you can pull out what you've embezzled and get to add that to your score. And so you have to decide if you want to play that rule. Now, if you're caught embezzling, hiding things on your body, then there's a pretty significant penalty. And in the game, there's actually a card that lets you go and pat someone down or, you know, get to know them better um, as a way of finding if someone's hidden something on them. Now, I don't tend to play my games in three-piece suits, so if I want to do that sort of thing, well, you know, you're going to have to really get good at sleight of hand. It's magic! No, it's video editing! Ha 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 ha! Now this game takes about 30 to 45 minutes to play. It'll play two to four players and for 12 and up, although there's a couple warnings I'll make about the game. First, there are a number of the images and concepts in the game that some people will find offensive. So if you're playing with people who are easily offended, you're playing with kids or using it in a school setting, I would suggest you look through all the cards first and remove those cards which you feel might offend folks. Second. Because the rules are written concisely, they're not thorough. There are situations in the game you're just going to have to make a house rule on and move on. On the Board Game Geek discussion board about the game, there's been some discussion with some of the rules questions. But in general, it's pretty good. There's just, it could have been tightened up a little bit. But anyway, let me show you how the game works. In the game, you've got assets, and these are in your hand. These represent the assets that your bank has. Now, all the assets card are going to have a numeric value in the top corner. It represents how much the card is worth. Some of them will also have flavor text. Many of them don't. And so if you use the card in the game for money, then you ignore the text. 
If you use the card in the game for the text, you ignore the money. So these are special effects you can play whenever you want throughout the game, but it means you're giving up the money to do so. So you've got to make a choice. When you start the game, you're going to have a workforce that you've hired, and you're going to have some trust the government has put into you. Now you never get to see these trust cards. These cards represent your bailout. And what these cards have on it are a number of assets that you get when you play it. You can play these cards at any time. Whenever you need money, you flip one over and you take that many asset cards. But what's going to happen during the game is you're going to run out of these. And once you run out of them, well, you're about sunk. So what's going to happen in the game is the first thing you can do is you can make your workforce bigger or smaller. Now there's three different types of workforces. There's medium risk, high risk, and low risk. At the start of your turn, there's going to be one new workforce available. And so you can choose to take on the workforce if you wish. And whenever you take on the workforce, the government likes you. And so they give you more trust. So you get another trust card. Now, You've got this workforce, and the next thing you have to do is pay for it. Up in the top corner represents how much you have to pay each turn to keep this workforce going. So I have to pay $3 million each turn. After I've paid for my workforce, then what I can do is I can invest in my workforce if I wish. I can put some of my money cards face up on top of the workforce, and it'll tell you on the workforce how many cards you can play. Now the reason why you do this is because these investments can pay out throughout the game. After you choose if you're going to invest, the last thing you do on your turn is you flip an event card. Now the event cards usually affect everyone sitting around the table. So the game flow is that you have, you have a turn, you pay your workforce, you put out more loans, things like that, and then you have an event. The next player changes their workforce, they have an event. So you're going to have to deal with four events before it's uh, your turn again to be able to make adjustments. So you have to be careful about that. And so some of the events are interest payments, and these are going to pay out based upon your workforce. So this interest payment says if you have put at least four million in low debt, then you're going to get two asset cards. And for each low risk workforce card you have in play, you get an asset card. Now the way this works is, let's say I had, all, I had these two high risk workforces. I'd add up all the debt I had loaned out to these workforces together when I look at a card dealing with high risk. So here's a high risk one. If I have five million in debt, I get five assets. So the high risk ones pay out better than the low risk ones, but there are also more cards in the game. Like this, you have to discard two assets from your high risk. So that's the problem. The high risk ones are much more volatile, but they have much larger payouts. Some of the other event cards cause you to lose things, to gain things. It's kind of a ride game, so things happen to you, you giggle. There are bonus time cards. These are the cards that let you stash away some of your assets into your personal fortune. Once you've done that, you can never tap them again, and those will be cards locked away for your end of game scoring. There's also cards that say crunch. When a crunch comes up, you have to show in your hand that you have enough to cover all of the loans you've made out. So you have to be able to show assets in your hand, if I had this, I'd have to have four million of assets I could show in my hand to indicate I had enough in my bank to cover my loans. If you don't have enough, then you have to panic and do something about it. Most likely what you're going to do is you're going to turn in one of your trusts and hopefully get a bailout, which is going to give you some more assets to get through the situation. If you ever run into that and you can't produce enough to cover your loans, you're bankrupt and you're out of the game. Another way you can go out of the game is if you cannot pay your workforce. Because at the start of your turn, your options are to either take on one new workforce or get rid of a workforce. The problem is when you get rid of a workforce, you also lose any assets that you loaned out to it, and you have to discard a trust card. So getting rid of a workforce is a very expensive thing, and you usually don't want to do it if you can avoid it. So during the game, there are four things you're going to do with these assets. One, you're going to spend them every turn in order to keep your workforce employed. Two, you're going to loan them out in order to hopefully get payouts. Three, you're going to have to have enough to cover all of your loans. And four, you're going to use them to put aside in your personal fortune, and that's how you're going to win the game. So what happens in the game is from the beginning, you're in a bad situation. There's not an easy way to get more assets. You're going to turn to your bailouts. You're going to hope for help, but eventually you're going to run out of luck. Now, sometimes you'll get more assets as the game goes on, and you can continue. But sometimes the assets say no help, in which case, if you were counting on that, if that was your last card, and you flip it over and no help, you're probably knocked out of the game. Game. This is actually, I see many players get knocked out of the game by this because you don't know how the government's going to bail you out until you need to ask for help. So that's the way the game works. It's a game of survival. You're going to continue going till there's only one bank left. That bank gets a, a bonus. Um, a few other bonuses are paid out. And then you calculate your personal embezzled funds, what you have on your body, plus what you've embezzled in the game, plus a little end of game bonuses, and to see who was the best investor and came away with the most personal finance. Well, that's crunch. 
And so what's going to go on in crunch is you're trying to embezzle money and get away and let the banks all collapse and end up with the best personal fortune. And uh, so you got to decide if this is the sort of game you want to bring to your family outing. I think, think it's a very clever game, actually. I like the way that it teaches you about how banks get into trouble, how they overextend themselves because doing so allows them to get more money from the government. What actually happens? And, and that's also War on Terror was similar in that it taught you some lessons about how this actually happens. And I have to say, I congratulate the designers of these games because that's a very difficult thing to do to capture a lesson and have you learn that lesson through emergent gameplay. I think that's really brilliant. And I would challenge you out there, other designers, to put that in into your games to try and create situations where people learn through playing the game. I really like that. Uh, again, you're going to have to watch out for some of the cards if you're playing in a school setting or something like this, uh, and you'll have to deal with rule situations. Uh, but overall, I have played the game several times and I have enjoyed it each time. It does seem to have several different paths of strategy, whether you try and bank big amounts early and crash out, or you try and go on and play as long as you can to provide yourself more opportunities to embezzle, but don't embezzle as much. So interesting game. I certainly enjoyed it. I would certainly play it again, and I recommend it to people who want to explore what's going on with all those bailouts. So until next time, I'm going to say farewell. I'm going to offer my hat because it's hot under these lights, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye. Ah, terrorism is itchy.